Still no sign of former disability lawyer Eric C. Kahn. A tip leads law enforcement to dig in Mingo County for a body, and an event focuses on drug recovery. And it all happened this week. Welcome everyone to This Week. For the next half hour, we'll catch you up on the news you may have missed and give you updates on the week that was in your hometown. We begin with the story that was captivated the region since EKB News first broke the story last Saturday, the apparent escape of embattled former disability attorney Eric C. Kahn. And Wednesday, those investigating the case broke their silence. EKB News reporter Chris Anderson went to FBI headquarters in Louisville to learn more about the case. He follows this report. For the first time since his alleged escape, the FBI spoke openly about Eric C. Kahn apparently fleeing from his home incarceration. Amy Hess, the special agent in charge of the Louisville FBI headquarters, said Kahn's prisoner monitoring device was found along I-75 in Lexington. When the device was tampered with, it sent an alert to law enforcement who responded immediately. When they recovered the device, Eric C. Kahn was nowhere to be found. On Friday evening, he removed his GPS monitoring device, or his ankle bracelet, which was found along I-75 in Lexington. Okay. Uh, the uh, U.S. Probation Office okay. we are working very closely with because they are responsible, uh, clearly, uh, for his monitoring. And so once that happened, no, we were notified, uh, and together we began, uh, again, um, ardently looking for him. Hess told a group of reporters that only a few agents are currently assigned to the Eric C. Kahn escape case. She said, however, that more resources and more personnel are being diverted to the case. Uh, right now, I am uh, redirecting resources from other squads and resident agencies in order to assist. We have uh, only two folks who are assigned to the two agents who are assigned to the Pikeville resident agency. Um, including the case agent, and of course uh, he's a little busy with trial this week uh, against uh, Mr. Atkins. And so as a result, uh, we, need, uh, we need additional assistance and I have redirected resources to assist in this matter. I will tell you that for me personally, this is one of the most important things we're doing in this office today, uh, is we need Eric Kahn to face justice. And today I'm announcing a $20,000 reward for his location that leads to his arrest so that he can return to Kentucky and face justice. Now, Khan is still believed to be in the U.S., and the FBI is following up on tips that it's already received about Khan's potential whereabouts. A $20,000 reward has also been posted for information leading to Khan's arrest. Reporting in Louisville, Chris Anderson, EKB News. Agent Hess was unable to say whether Khan had help in his getaway, but she did say anyone who provides him with assistance would face criminal charges. If you would like to watch Wednesday's full press conference, you can find it online at ekbtv.com. Wednesday, police in Mingo County were following up on a tip concerning a body buried in Chatteroy nine years ago. EKB News reporter Shelby Steele was at the scene of the excavation. The Mingo County Sheriff's Office is currently investigating an anonymous tip called in yesterday afternoon. According to police, someone reported a drunk man claimed to have killed an elderly man, buried him in his grandmother's backyard, and then constructed an outbuilding over top of the evidence. After questioning several people, police found it credible enough to investigate. We brought a cadaver dog down, and the cadaver dog indicated uh, under the building. And so right now we're actually digging in, in search of it. The Mingo County Sheriff's Office was on scene for over eight hours yesterday and is back again today. According to police, the apparent suspect lived with his grandmother in Chatteroy at the time of the alleged murder. The person in question is actually on the run now from felony warrants we have on him here. Um, but, you know, as far as any other information, that's all we have at this time. According to the tip, police say the murder happened in 2008 or 2009. If there is a victim, police have no information on who it could be or if the person was even reported missing after it happened. We will continue to follow this story and bring you more information as it becomes available. 
Reporting in Chatteroy, I'm Shelby Still for EKB News. Police did make one arrest at the scene, but it was not related to this case and was for outstanding warrants. In an update to that story, Mingo County Sheriff's Office has wrapped up its investigation after days of searching, no remains were found. The Mingo County Sheriff's Office suspended their investigation after two days. If any additional credible information is discovered, police will continue their investigation. Until then, the case is suspended. Police in Letcher County allegedly found more than a half dozen active meth labs while responding to an assault complaint last week. Letcher County Sheriff's Chief Deputy Barry Engel told EKB News 35-year-old Eric Frazier of Harbor Drive in the UZ community near Whitesburg was arrested when officers served an arrest warrant against him on June 1st. Engel said deputies had received a tip that Frazier was manufacturing meth near his property and during a search, they, along with probation and parole officers, allegedly found a cooler containing eight active one-step meth labs that were cooking meth at the time. Engel said KSP officers were called to dispose of those labs and said that that was the largest quantity of active meth labs they had found at one site. Seems like every time we go to a complaint, there's a meth lab somewhere but I've never seen this many at one time. And like I said, if the detectives that are charged with cleaning these things up say that that's the biggest one they've ever seen, then that's, that's something very unusual. This is not the crystal myth like you would see in Breaking Bad. This is just a homegrown, one-step, nasty stuff that I can't even believe people would put into their body. But uh, this is the biggest one I've ever seen. Eric Frazier was charged with manufacturing meth and possession of meth precursors as well as possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. He remains lodged in the Letcher County Jail. Chief Deputy Engel said he anticipates presenting the case to a grand jury. He added anyone with information about possible meth manufacturing should contact their local law enforcement agency. Drug activity in local city parks has been making headlines as of late and the city of Pikeville is making good on their promise to combat the issue as a Pike County man was arrested on drug charges at the Pikeville City Park Tuesday afternoon. An officer with the Pikeville City Police Department approached a group of suspects at the park after recognizing one as having active warrants for his arrest. As the officer approached, one of the subjects threw a set of scales and a syringe onto the ground and fled on foot towards the Big Sandy Community and Technical College. The officer caught up with the subject and had to deploy his taser. Upon his arrest, the subject was found to be in possession of several baggies which contained a substance believed to be meth and used syringes. 28-year-old Jefferson Spears was charged with possession of a controlled substance, fleeing or evading police, wanton endangerment, and drug paraphernalia. He remains lodged in the Pike County Detention Center. The drug epidemic affects every community in our region and communities are beginning to fight back in the form of recovery rallies. Many gathered together Monday night in Auxer for the planning of the fifth annual Take Back Our Park event. Although the focus of the rally is recovery, it's not just recovery for those who are addicted. There is many different ways that, that people choose to recover and we want to respect that and we want to have uh, different, different outlets of recovery to come in and be available. So if somebody has a question, we don't want anybody to come to this event and have a question about recovery that somebody can't answer. We feel like that the family always gets left out. Everybody, recovery programs, a lot of them are based on the, the addict themselves, but the families also uh, need to get themselves informed and get themselves educated. The event is set for Saturday, July 29th at 5 p.m. at the Auxer Community Park. If you would like to get involved with Take Back Our Park, contact Tim Hall by the means listed on your screen. Alpha Natural Resources says it plans to open a new underground coal mine in West Virginia this summer and create more than 50 jobs. The Kingsport, Tennessee coal producer says the Panther Eagle Mine at subsidiary Marfork Coal is expected to begin extracting metallurgical coal as early as July. Alpha Vice President of Operations Charlie Burse says improving market conditions have created more of a demand for the type of coal used for steel manufacturing. Alpha emerged from bankruptcy reorganization last year. Last year, Ramaco developed announcement plans for two new mines in West Virginia and Virginia. 
Coming up after being sentenced to life in prison over two decades ago, two Eastern Kentuckians are looking to have those sentences overturned. That story and more is coming up next on This Week. Pikeville Medical Center's Vision Services now include an optometry clinic in partnership with the University of Pikeville, Kentucky College of Optometry, PMC provides diagnosis and treatment of eye conditions for the whole family. The optometry clinic is conveniently located on the ninth floor of the PMC clinic. Schedule an appointment today. Call 606-218-2209. Pikeville Medical Center, providing quality eye care to the region. Whether you are insured, uninsured, or underinsured, Home Place Clinic is available to you for all your medical needs. With locations in Pikeville, Prestonsburg, Belfry, Louisa, and Paintsville, we provide services such as primary health care, in-house behavioral services, and case management services, which link patients to community resources. Lab work is conveniently done in-house, and prescription assistance is available. We accept all insurances and offer a sliding scale fee for copays, never turning patients away due to an inability to pay. Call us at 606-788-1345. Watch EKB News at 6 and 10 p.m. on weekday evenings for your chance to win a cruise to the Bahamas. Keep your eyes peeled for our Cruise for Clues words each evening. Then visit EKBTV.com to submit your entry. One lucky winner will be chosen at random for a five-day Bahamas cruise from Charleston, South Carolina. Watch the news and win a cruise. Some restrictions apply. Must be at least 21 years of age to reserve this vacation. Each passenger must have a valid passport. Transportation to and from the departure is not included. See website for further details. A Pike County man who led police on a foot pursuit that seriously injured two Pikeville police officers could face up to 10 years in prison. 23-year-old Michael Don Holbrooks of Hellyer was indicted this week on felony fleeing and evading and assault charges for allegedly fighting with and running from police on May 26 while allegedly high on methamphetamine. Pikeville police officers Sonny Buckley and Josh Tackett suffered broken bones during the foot pursuit of Holbrooks who had warrants for absconding from parole for a meth-related conviction. Pike's Commonwealth's attorney Rick Bartley said another Pikeville officer likely saved Holbrook's life when he went into the river to try to escape capture. One of the things about this case is very interesting is Michael Holbrook probably would have died had he not been pursued uh, into the river by Officer Chad Branham, another officer with the Pikeville Police Department. It's my understanding he jumped into the river that was very swollen because of uh, recent rain and whenever he got in, Officer Branham jumped in and actually pulled him out of the water. Probably saved his life. The second takeaway from this case is that Michael Don Holbrooks allegedly was under the influence of methamphetamine at the time and also the reason he was running is because he had absconded from parole from an earlier meth charge. So this case just shows these people that are on meth do not act rationally and very rarely do they submit to any type of restrictions such as bond, probation, or parole. Holbrook is facing three counts of fleeing or evading, two counts of third degree assault, and one count each of criminal mischief and being a persistent felony offender. He remains lodged in the Pike County Detention Center. A Logan County man who assaulted a now West Virginia State Senator is sentenced. 42-year-old Jonathan Porter of Holden was sentenced Wednesday to one to five years behind bars. He pleaded guilty in April to unlawful assault following the attack on Richard Ojida before last year's primary election. Twenty years after six young men and women from eastern Kentucky pleaded guilty to killing three members of a Knox County, Tennessee family, two of them are still filing appeals. Within the last 45 days, the two youngest defendants in the Lillylid murder case, Karen Howell and Jason Bryant, have both asked a federal judge to throw out their sentences. Each of the six are serving life sentences without the possibility of parole, but Bryant and Howell are claiming their sentences should be reviewed because they were juveniles at the time of the murders. Two recent Supreme Court rulings say juveniles should no longer be sentenced to life without the chance of parole and can be applied retroactively to past sentences. Coming up next, Michaela Colley will be in with sports, but first, Chief Meteorologist Latham Hopkins will be in with a look back at the week in weather. It's all coming up next on This Week.
Pikeville Medical Center's vision services now include an optometry clinic in partnership with the University of Pikeville, Kentucky College of Optometry, PMC provides diagnosis and treatment of eye conditions for the whole family. The optometry clinic is conveniently located on the ninth floor of the PMC clinic. Schedule an appointment today. Call 606-218-2209. Pikeville Medical Center, providing quality eye care to the region. Attention small business owners. Penn Funding announces the easiest and fastest business funding program, the Platinum Business Account. We needed cash fast. Business is good, but this is an emergency. We needed some new equipment, and the banks wouldn't help us. At Penn Funding, we like to say yes. You're approved. With your Platinum Business Account, you could qualify for up to $50,000 or more. This amazing new business account funding program is so effective, you could have the cash you need in just days. I called, spoke with an agent who pre-qualified us, and connected me. Call now for your Platinum Business Account. If you've been in business for at least six months, you could qualify for up to $50,000 or more in just days. I called Penn Funding and had my money fast. Need cash for your business? Call Penn Funding now. Call 800-706-9477. That's 800-706-9477. Watch EKB News at 6 and 10 p.m. on weekday evenings for your chance to win a cruise to the Bahamas. Keep your eyes peeled for our Cruise for Clues words each evening. Then visit ekbtv.com to submit your entry. One lucky winner will be chosen at random for a five-day Bahamas cruise from Charleston, South Carolina. Watch the news and win a cruise. Some restrictions apply. Must be at least 21 years of age to reserve this vacation. Each passenger must have a valid passport. Transportation to and from the departure is not included. See website for further details. Welcome back into this week on EKB TV. I'm Chief Meteorologist Lathan Hopkins with a look back at your weekend weather. And it was a cool week across the region. Temperatures each and every day below average. We should be near 80 degrees this time of the year. 73 with a lot of rain on Monday. Actually, that was a record as a matter of fact. 75, a little bit of uh, rain on Tuesday. We dried things out on Wednesday, but look at that high temperature. Some of us didn't even break out of the upper 60s for highs on Wednesday. A few showers on Thursday, 74, and then back closer to normal as we wrapped up the week on Friday at 78 degrees. The setup this weekend, high pressure will be moving off the east coast as it does so. We get on the back side, hazy, hot, and humid weather will make a return starting this weekend, but you'll really notice it as we head into next week. As a matter of fact, by Monday, we're talking high temperatures that may flirt with 90 degrees. The weather was perfect in Owensboro and Lexington for some softball and baseball. Michaela Colley has more. Last week, region championships. This week, state championships on the high school level as two mountain teams venture to their respective state tournaments in high school baseball and softball. I'm Michaela Colley. The Pikeville Lady Panthers represented the 15th region in Owensboro, Kentucky this week in this year's KHSAA State Softball Tournament after defeating three-time defending champion Johnson Central in the 15th region championship match. The Lady Panthers fell short in the double elimination tournament falling to Madisonville North Hopkins in Game 1 10-1 on Thursday and then on Friday morning. The Lady Panthers still couldn't find their groove as Woodford County got the upper hand on the Panthers in five innings, winning 12-2. The Lady Panthers finished their season at 30-7. We caught up with head coach Dave Thomas following the game. We had a great year. You know, we won 30 games. We scored our school record number of runs. Uh, we, we had the highest team batting average in school history. Uh, you know, we, we won everything we wanted to win except, you know, a state tournament, including the All-A where we were runner-up and, of course, this, this show here. But uh, this is a great atmosphere, just a wonderful opportunity for our girls. And I couldn't be any more proud of any other team that I've ever coached. And I've been coaching a long time. A couple uh, miscues there hurt us, but, uh, you know, can't make mistakes against uh, good teams. And, you know, down when you're down here, you're playing against some of the best teams or the best teams in the state of Kentucky. Uh, I couldn't be again. Couldn't be any more proud of uh, a team or a group of girls than uh, than I am of our of uh, our team this year and our seniors. And you know, proud of our school. Our school has done a, 
ton of good things and uh, won a lot of things. And uh, we're down here representing, you know, the 15th region, but we're also representing Pikeville High School, Pikeville, Pike County. And, uh, you know, we're, we're proud to be from Eastern Kentucky. And on the baseball diamond, the Johnson Central Golden Eagles are in Lexington, representing the 15th region for the second year in a row for the first time since 1995 and 1996. Interesting fact, head coach Sean Hall was there as an athlete and now as a coach. Last season, the Golden Eagles finished their season in the Elite Eight. This season, they're hoping for just a bit more, but the Eagles came up short couple runs as Highlands got the best of Johnson Central on Friday in a final score of 3-1. to one. Johnson Central ends their season at 31-7. and seven. Collegiately, the Kentucky baseball program is making their first ever appearance in the NCAA Super Regionals after waiting 121 years. The Wildcats hit the road to Louisville where the Cards hosted the best of three series from Jim Patterson Stadium. The tournament continues all weekend long, but on Friday the Cards got the best of the Cats 5-2. But it's a best of three series, so the Cats still have a chance to come back. That's this week in sports. Be sure to check out what's going on next week in the world of sports. I'm Michaela Colley. Sean Allen will be back with you more after the break. Pikeville Medical Center's emergency department has immediate openings for NPs, RNs, ED technicians, EMTs, and paramedics. PMC is a level two trauma center and is home to an $11.3 million state-of-the-art emergency department and the region's most advanced medical technology. PMC offers great pay and an excellent benefit package. Call 606-218-4908 or visit pikevillehospital.org to apply. Whether you are insured, uninsured, or underinsured, Home Place Clinic is available to you for all your medical needs. With locations in Pikeville, Prestonsburg, Belfry, Louisa, and Paintsville, we provide services such as primary health care, in-house behavioral services, and case management services, which link patients to community resources. Lab work is conveniently done in-house, and prescription assistance is available. We accept all insurances and offer a sliding scale fee for copays, never turning patients away due to an inability to pay. Call us at 606-788-1345. Hi, Kathy Mitchell here with my new red copper cookware. The revolutionary pan made with nonstick ceramic and super strong copper. Guaranteed to stay scratch free forever. It's lightweight yet super strong so it won't scratch, peel or chip into your food. Red copper is a baking pan with a handle. It goes into the oven up to 500 degrees and everything slides right out. Cook my healthy crispy chicken fingers with little or no fat or oil. Chop steak and onion for a melty Philly cheesesteak. Absolutely no sticking. Or whisk eggs without a mixing bowl. Truly a time saver. Call now and receive my 10-inch red copper pan for just $19.99. Plus, get my recipe book free. Call now and you can double the offer and receive a second set. Plus, our new forever sharp copper knife. Just pay a separate fee. Razor sharp and food slides right off. An incredible value. Call now. Call 1-800-426-0848 to get your special offer red copper pan. Call now or go to redcopperpan.com. So call 1-800-426-0848. Call now. There's a musical tradition here unlike anywhere else in America. During this week, we shine a light on part of that musical tradition, so just sit back, relax, and enjoy our mountain music. It's time now for Mountain Music, being brought to you by the Mountain Arts Center, the main stage of the country music highway. Now there's nothing to do here. We'll sit back and die. 
more often than not, the best songs are inspired by home. I started thinking about this area and more, I started gravitating towards where my dad grew up because we were at just, it was an old coal camp. When he was a young man, it was absolutely the place to be. Everything that these major cities have now, they had it in these little backwoods in the middle of nowhere in eastern Kentucky. When they would move out, it left a void that was never filled. Now there's nothing there, and there's, but there's still people there. And it, it doesn't matter if the hills catch on fire and everything burns to the ground, they'll build up from the ashes and they'll stay there because that's where they were born and that's, that's where they're gonna die. And that's kind of the whole, there's nothing left to do here but sit back and die. Coming up next, we'll fill you in on a few happenings in your area as we take a look at this week ahead. Stay with us. We'll be right back on This Week. Pikeville Medical Center has earned the Joint Commission's Gold Seal of Approval and the American Heart Association and American Stroke Association's Heart Check Mark for advanced certification for primary stroke centers. This marks the eighth consecutive year for this honor. PMC demonstrates commitment to the care of stroke patients with a complex set of standards and requirements. Count on Pikeville Medical Center for quality stroke care. Pikeville Medical Center, proud Mayo Clinic Care Network member. I knew I could get myself out of this. I just needed some hope and some help. I took the first step to recovery when I made the call. If you're depressed, drinking, and using drugs, you may need help. And the Affordable Care Act guarantees coverage of substance abuse. Call the Addiction, Hope, and Helpline now for a free assessment. I had problems just getting to sleep, drinking, and using pills every night. I feel like I'm losing control. I'm afraid I'll lose my job or even my family. Are you losing hope? You can recover and get back on track. Call now for hope and help with proven gentle recovery programs. I never thought that I could be somebody who didn't drink and use drugs. I have something to hold on to for strength. I'm in recovery, getting the help I need. Call the Addiction Hope and Helpline now for a free assessment with someone who cares. Call 800-876-6387, 800-876-6387. I'm Kevin Christopher. And I'm Nancy Cox. You already count on East Kentucky Broadcasting for the latest local news from Eastern Kentucky and counties in Virginia and West Virginia. Now we're delighted to join EKB to bring you breaking news from the bluegrass and beyond. Join us at 5.30, 7 and 11, Monday through Friday for LEX 18 News, right here on EKB TV. When you need to know, count on LEX 18 and EKB News starting June 19th on EKB TV. Here are some upcoming events that you may be interested in. The 15th annual Johnny Ray Turner Fight for MS Golf Tournament will take place Friday, June 16th, beginning at 9 a.m. at the Stonecrest Golf Course in Prestonsburg. For more information, log on to the address listed on your screen. And a community fun day will be held Saturday, June 17th from noon until 4 at the Father's House of Prayer in Sitka in Johnson County. I hope you enjoyed our look back at some of the stories that made headlines this week. Be sure to tune in next weekend at 6 p.m. right here on EKB-TV. For this week, I'm Sean Allen. Have a great weekend.